I heard you went someplace after. Hey, and no, it's not true. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. All lies. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PEDCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all-around good people. It is week 34 of 2022. I'm Chris Louie, and glad I did not get sick while out in Las Vegas last week. Yes! I am invincible! With me, I have the cooled off Duke Silver with his AC running at 70 degrees at home. That is 100% right, and I'm, I'm glad to be back. Uh, the 70, 70 degrees inside the house is awesome, especially when uh, this past Sunday I spent nine hours installing some audio onto my, uh, my Razer, aka side by side. So, four speakers and a sub, and a whole lot of tears. It was 108 outside that day. That's pretty hot, but probably normal for this time of year in your neck of the woods. Yeah, although today it's uh, it's freezing. It's only 102 out. Might have to get a sweater. Sweater only. weather. <laughs> only. <laughs> only. <laughs> but there's no Northern... humidity, so it makes it easy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Northern California, we got like monsoon rains today just randomly out of the blue. Isn't that great? No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was just sunny and then it the monsoon rain and then now it's like cloudy yeah it's weird weird weather having i didn't even know you knew what monsoon season was over there that's crazy yeah well there there was a torrential rain in uh las vegas last week right after everyone left after black hat yeah at defcon like i I sent you guys the video from that like their parking lots that were flooded some guy brought out like a boogie board and was boogie boarding in one of the parking lots it was the rain out there was no joke last week wow and we have Glenn Medina with his AC set to 70 in the summer like a psychopath. Or terrorist. Where are you <laughs> Where are you broadcasting from this week? Not today, buddy boy. I've got the AC set to 68 cuz I'm not paying for electricity. I'm at a hotel room out here at uh, in the San Diego area, uh, out by Mission Bay, uh, bringing my kid to uh, college week. So you should have that down to in. 60 then. Why do you have it at 68? It won't let me go down to 60. <laughs> 68 oh, wow. is, right. wow. is comfortable. So, But yeah, happy here, to be here. here, Chris. Yeah, number 74. Could you believe it? It's crazy. Speaking of 68, apparently you're staying at the uh, the Motel 6 because <laughs> any normal <laughs> hotel for more than $100 a night is going to let you crank it down to 60. So we'll just assume where you're at. Uh, yeah. The no, I'm, I'm not cheap. I use, my, I use my Marriott points. I love my Marriott. All right. Otherwise, I was going to warn you, be be wary of the guy that hangs up by the ice machine telling you he can get you anything you want. In San Diego? <laughs> no, at any Motel anywhere. 6. At any Motel 6. There's always a yeah. guy hanging around the ice machine offering bag, you things. Yep. Yeah, yep. not me. <laughs> I, but I get you. Well, no guess this week. We had yet another last-minute cancellation, but we will have a guest joining us next week, so be sure to stay tuned. You're dead to us, Zoltan. Wasting our time, brother. <laughs> Good. Calling him out. Get him on the show. <laughs> Combined, we have decades of information security experience and are here not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for you this week. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, hey, what could be better than being on the podcast? I don't want to get it. Nothing. But speaking <laughs> yeah, of Zoltan, exactly. right? Wasn't the in the movie Big, wasn't it the machine he went to? Wasn't it Zoltan? Like Zoltan? The, he's like, I want to be big. No? You guys remember? It was a lady. It was a lady Zoltan, though. Ah, you might be right. What yeah. do I know? Fast forward, everyone. Let's get to the opening topic. <laughs> Before we get to the opening topic, we've got two pieces of closing the loop this week. Uh, the first one is as a callback to a previous story of a user who got two million dollars worth of his Counter Strike skins stolen. He actually did get his skins back, but the buyers of these stolen skins are out a lot of money. Additionally, the Counter-Strike skin trading platform, CS Money, great name by the way, was hacked and over $6 million worth of skins were stolen. The skins are now in a trade lock, so most legitimate selling and trading platforms have agreed not to list them for sale, but that does not stop users from buying them directly from each other. No word on whether Counter-Strike developer Valve will reverse the transactions and return the skins to their rightful owners. Wait, that's jacked up. The the people that bought stolen skins, they, they probably didn't know that it was stolen. They just lost the money. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. So they all reverse the transactions and yeah, they'll have to go after the scammer to get their money back. Were they worth a lot of money? I don't 
two million dollars. <laughs> yeah, up $2 to two million dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, some up. of the rare, some of the rarer skins are worth like sixty thousand each. I tell you what, if my kid told me they wanted to buy a skin for sixty thousand dollars or even like three hundred, I'd be like, no, absolutely not. What are you thinking? I'm you the guy all, at the supermarket that will that that will totally like. Hold up the entire line because I'm trying to save a dollar on some digital coupon. So yeah, you are these... such a liar. <laughs> I've seen your grocery bill. I've seen your grocery bill. Don't even. That say That was a big no. I, I that was part of the reason I was trying to get twenty dollars off of something, and I swear I saw <laughs> the night before. Yeah. So despite how large the bill is, you still don't want to spend any more money than is necessary. I get it. Yeah, well, we just got back today and from the grocery store, and it was like $300 for my daughter's first week of uh, uh, classes as far as just the grocery bill alone. He's setting up yep. for failure, man. You should have bought $3 worth of Top Ramen, caught it a day. There you go. Yeah. Orange juice, That's what we grew up ramen. on. All for the sake of eating healthy. Isn't that crazy? Setting the bar high there, Glenn. Did they ever ah. tell you about how I almost killed my roommates? I was mad at them for... Like drinking, like we had like seven people in a in a three bedroom little townhouse, and they kept drinking my orange juice. So I I poured bleach in there to get them back. That was, oh, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. Thank so God as, we did the smell test. So as that guy on the show, has the statute of limitations <laughs> on attempted murder been expired yet? Uh, you know, it all worked out in the end. You know, we both laughed <laughs> after okay. he got his stomach pumped. <laughs> Not drinking Brian's orange juice, that's for sure. Damn right you're not. And on that note, uh, the second piece of closing the loop <laughs> feedback is two weeks ago we talked about MFA or multi-factor authentication notification bombing and it looks like the networking giant Cisco fell victim to this attack. A threat actor gained access to employees' personal Gmail account where they happened to store their Cisco corporate credentials they were prompted for a second factor after attempting to log in. The threat actor performed a series of vishing attacks or voice phishing attacks to convince the user to accept the MFA prompt. And they also did some MFA notification bombing, which worked. And the threat actor gained access to Cisco's internal network through a VPN. Now, Talos did an amazing write-up, and I'll link it through in the show notes, but credit where credit's due that they were forthcoming about what happened. Say it ain't so, a VPN hack... No. <laughs> Actually, they didn't hack the VPN. They were just able to get through with the credentials, right? So, And then we're able to move laterally. Yeah, That's and around I... like a damn field mouse, I tell you. I think I've heard I... of Cisco. Don't they sell routers and switches? And they're or great is it at food. I and thought they... that's Cisco, the oh. food company. And they're great well. at like, acquiring like layer seven companies and then making that product just fall short on everything and then eventually being deprecated. I think I've heard of it. They've had a couple good products. I, I have a feeling I know which MFA solution they use because they acquired one. It's not, it's not too difficult to figure it out. And I've heard that this particular MFA solution is extremely susceptible to MFA bombing. Like when I when I did research for that the story we did last week, like this vendor's name just kept coming up as people that fall victim to it. So not but entirely if, surprised. Yeah, but if you're getting MFA bombed, you should automatically know that there is something fishy going on. Like you're... You're, 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 in, you're in the eyesight of, of being in a, of having an attack start on you. Would you guys agree or no? I mean, you, you guys, think. after the second or third one, you'd be like, Hey, something's going on. Like maybe I should change my password. Yeah. I, I got one like maybe, you know, three, four weeks ago where they were doing a, a text um, bomb through for PayPal approval. And I was like, no, wasn't me. No, deny, deny, deny. So. Maybe it caused me to did change my password though, so on PayPal. Yeah, hopefully it stopped after that. Yeah. So, so what makes uh, we'll call it Buo, so we don't name drop here. But what makes that particular MFA more susceptible to MFA attacks? I'm not entirely sure of why they're more vulnerable than other vendors. I don't know if they're in more use or if their notifications are more annoying. But when I was researching it. That particular vendor kept coming up as the vendor of choice for these MFA bombing attacks. And just for the show notes, when you say you research stuff, you're just Googling, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm, I'm ducking it. I use DuckDuckGo. I don't use Google. Oh, there it is. Well, that must make it incredibly hard to find things. Yep. I like it. It's it's good enough. 
It's not as so, comprehensive but, as Google, but, but it's good enough. The the start of that came from the fact that they were the attackers were able to get to the browser security store, right? So that the, where the passwords are kept, and it just so happens, shame on the the Cisco employee for storing his his passwords or credentials inside of the browser store. Is that fair? It, no, I don't think it was the browser store. I think it was in the user's personal Gmail account, like the email that to themselves or something. They they found the username and password in the email in the Gmail account. Really? I think so. Or it might be, I might have been Google account. You might be right. I'll, I'll have to double check the the Talos write up. But it, I yeah. I thought it's a Google. Okay, so yeah, I, I could see it being Google account being stored in Gmail or stored in the browser. Yeah, yeah. If only there was a browser. That could encrypt those passwords, if only. <laughs> well, it, Chrome does it by default. I think it's encrypted because don't you have to enter your like your Windows login password to decrypt you, it? You do, but there's actually third party tools that are out there that can decrypt um, the, those, the password those store. Got it? Yeah, okay. the password store. So not very difficult. Yeah, it's funny. But every again, time you say Talos, like or Talos, doesn't really matter. There's a Talos by my house. Great Mexican food. It's making me hungry. <laughs> I'll put it in the show notes. Maybe they can uh, Uber Eats it to you guys. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, kudos to Talos. I have a Talos shirt from one of the like 2015 or 16 Black Hats, I think. And it said the the back of the shirt, the front of the shirt said Talos, and then the back of the shirt said pissing off the bad guys. <laughs> and whenever I walk around that shirt, someone's always asking me, so who are the bad guys? And what are you doing to piss them off? So... <laughs> Great shirt, yeah. by the way. I love that shirt. I still have it today. Yeah, you wear the crap out of free stuff. You got one on right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> I love my shirts. What are you talking about? How was Black Cat? You know, it's just like it's like thrift shopping, but everything's free. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that in a while, though. I haven't gotten any shirts in a while. Speaking of which, did uh, Chris bring us some goodies from DefCon as far as some shirts are concerned? Oh, or yeah. was the line too stinking long? No, the merch line was way too long, like four plus hours. It, it was ridiculous. So yeah, no, I did not get any merch yeah. from any official merch from DEF CON. Yeah, the, the, just the lines were way too long. Yeah, sorry about that, Chris. But yeah, thank you for trying. Yep. If only they had an idea that people would be there to buy stuff and could have forecasted that. Yeah. Or right. if there's or only it, a way to it, know. Maybe do it online so there couldn't be a line. <laughs> Ah, it can't be anonymous then. Yeah, yeah, cash only. Ah. Did you guys notice that when you bought your DEF CON t- or your Black Hat ticket that you can actually buy your DEF CON ticket too? I'm like, the whole purpose is this is supposed to be anonymous, but you're allowing me to use my corporate credit card to do this. It is, but for people that care more about convenience than anonymity, then there you go. So, so Chris, when you bought that, did did you pay it in cash so you can get a receipt and then submit it for expenses? No, I use my credit card, so they know I went to DEF CON. And I'm, oh, I'm gotcha. talking about it on this podcast, so everybody knows I went to DEF CON. <laughs> it's no secret. Gotcha. I gotcha. was there dressed up as a furry. You guys have no idea. And I paid a furry, furry or furries. furby? Uh, furry. <laughs> there were furries there at furry. the DEF CON party. I, I was watching you, Chris. It, but... <laughs> yeah. good, old, good old furries. All right, for our opening topic, I've been watching a lot of Scammer Payback. It's a YouTube channel featuring a guy named Pierogi, thanks to... Glenn's recommendation a few weeks ago on the podcast. It's really interesting to see how these scams work. I'm sure all of our listeners at one point or another have received the scam bait email of some software renewal from Geek Squad or Norton or McAfee for $400. And if you want to dispute the charge, you have to call the phone number in the email. After you call that number, they connect to your computer using any desk. And long story short, they ask you to wire them a bunch of money. Well, these scammers know no bounds. There was an 80-year-old woman who fell for such a scam and was about to send the money. These scammers even took the liberty of calling the woman an Uber to take her to the bank. Thankfully, the woman asked a neighbor about it before getting into the Uber, and they warned her of the scam. Now, there's a special place in the cyber afterlife for scumbags like this who try to scam 80-year-old women out of their life savings. I mean, she can't take it with her, right? So might as well just give it away. That is just terrible. They, <laughs> where these people are just bad karma, <laughs> really bad karma. What's in? What's a? I, I don't know if you saw it went a little further into that, Chris, but a lot of these um, 
these calls these scam call centers are run out of normal call centers like a subsidiary of a regular call center and it's like you know they, they, they've got to put they've got to put some fire or some pressure on the, on the on these call centers to be able to shut them down this it's just terrible like i think some of them are like shared workspaces it's like a we work like you rent yeah a corner out of a we work and you know if, if that happened here we work would just say oh you know we rent the space whatever goes on there goes on there but i mean there's has to be some limitation like you can't run a drug operation out of a, a we work they get in tons of trouble but I, I don't know what the climate is like in, in india if they just look the other way you know as long as you pay your rent no questions asked but yeah so that's the next question why is it always out of india it's probably cheap labor and no extradition i don't know yeah <laughs> interesting gotta make a dollar one question. way or the other yeah it's probably because there's there's well that's probably the same reason that a lot of call centers are out there you know labor is cheaper than other countries and uh, a good percentage of them probably speak english too yeah have you guys Maybe seen the, like, the, the uh, social media like farms that they have there too the light farms yeah they'll yeah. just have like a you know, giant, you know, four by six piece of plywood, right? And there's just like hundreds of phones on there and people are just, do just typing in names, liking something like, 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 and just going through this crazy stuff like that. You, you know, you essentially just pay for likes. Are they, so, it's, it's so that way you can monetize and, and get votes up? Is that what it is? Instead of saying that you're a bot, you're actually someone on a like, on a like board actually doing that physically. Yep. Yeah, exactly liking wow. one of those follow Instagram follower things or a review. The review bombing one is another one where they just put some kind of malicious app up there, fill it with five star reviews, and then you know it gets promoted in the app store. Wow. I've actually seen it like in the Google Play Store. You'll see all these five star reviews, and it says, "Yeah, this game is really fun on my iPad." And I'm like, "Well, this is an Android app store. I don't know what you're doing playing it on an iPad." <laughs> ah, so Chris reads the uh, the reviews. And why do you like? How do you even know this is true, man? You don't, do you even own an Android anything? I do. Yeah, for work I have to have one. You have to have an Android for work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because I have okay, customers I that have Android. And... Do you have a Do you have a Pi at home as well? <laughs> raspberry Pi. It, yeah, yeah. Everyone should have pie. a Raspberry Pi. I have an Apple Pi. Like... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I have a whole stack of Raspberry Pis. I've got like three of them over here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I, projects. they are, but man, do they take up some time? Yeah, I have, they're out there just buying GameStop right now. You guys see that <laughs> that spiked again today? Yeah, GameStop and Bed Bath and Beyond. Really? Yeah, another meme right. stock craze. Nice. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go meme, go. All right. For our first story, while we were all out in Las Vegas, Amazon quietly acquired iRobot, the makers of the popular Roomba robot vacuum cleaners. Now, why would Amazon be interested in buying a vacuum company? The answer is surprisingly simple. Amazon wants to know what's inside your house. Attempts to put cameras and other monitoring devices in your house have failed. If you guys remember the Amazon key service, the Amazon drone that was supposed to follow you around. You know, I don't put ring or internet connected cameras inside my house, but I do have a robot vacuum. It's the ultimate Trojan horse and should scare every household who currently owns one. We said before on the podcast that the fastest growing segment of Amazon is not its marketplace or AWS, it's their advertising division. So Amazon acquiring iRobot, cool or creepy? I'll say it's creepy because it was such a quiet acquisition. Otherwise, they say it's pretty cool. But... You know, how long until you, I guess you just start throwing a camera and a microphone on there? It's like, hey, Amazon, sweep the floors and order me a beer. Yeah, no kidding. I, I, I agree. That is very creepy. But, I mean, everyone's still going to use it because no one wants to push a vacuum anymore, right? You guys have one? I have the, the shark one. I had a Roomba before that. It eventually died. And it's great. We have dogs, so they're always, you know tracking in all kinds of dust and there's dog hair everywhere and this one has the the ability to like kind of dump off its uh container itself otherwise it'd be full every single day kind of neat whatever yeah. happened with that amazon drone like i i remember seeing that i was like oh it's kind of cool 
I think they had to pass like FCC regulations, right, in order to have that drone. Well, no, it's be flying inside your house. It was the oh, one yeah, it's supposed to like way. E. Yeah. It's supposed to like follow you around, and it was supposed to act like it when you were away from the house and someone broke in, it would like fly around the intruder and take pictures of them and say, "Hey, you're on video. Get out of my oh. house." I thought like you were talking like about the drone that delivered your packages from Amazon. No, this was it was yeah, it was supposed to be a a drone that inside your house that followed you around. Yeah, there's there's just too many things. That that's just like saying, "Hey, let's uh, let me give at the Amazon guy access to my garage, so that way he can put my packages in my garage." Like, do you guys trust that? Yeah, well? that was that Amazon key service that never took off. It was like a smart lock, a camera, and a phone app or something that they would unlock your door. The camera would record them, and then they would lock the door and drop your package off inside. Well, no, they've got another one, and they've partnered with the garage company Chamberlain, and it's called MyQ, and basically, you know, you can give them, you know, access, you know, they'll, they'll open your garage, they'll put the packages inside there, and then, you know, they'll close the garage afterwards, so, but yeah, you know. never took off, so this is their way of getting inside the house, so. To answer your question, so I do have a robot vacuum. It's actually made, so mine is manufactured by a Chinese company. So I don't know which one's worse, you know, Chinese made <laughs> robot vacuum better, or Chris. Amazon owning a, the Roomba. Is it internet connected? <laughs> it is, but I've, I have the firewall rules set such that it cannot communicate with China. So if they have US based servers, yes, but what version, who do you knows? Have, what brand yeah. do you have? <laughs> I have to look it up. I don't. I don't it's know a, it's a Huawei. <laughs> Huawei. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have a no. I'm. A, I have something to add to this. So I make a joke when I'm doing presentations uh, about you know sandbox malware and ransomware and all that stuff about it being disgusting. And usually the punchline is it's kind of like the dog pooped on the carpet and the room ran it over. It's disgusting. You want nothing to do with this in your environment. I only got this idea because it actually happened to my sister in law. They dogs were out. The Roomba went off like in the middle of the day, and they came home to just a everywhere. giant dog crap factory smeared everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that I've happened to those. that happened to one of our coworkers too, more than once actually. They didn't learn their lesson the first time. The, the only saving grace was they had hardwood floors, so that was nice. But can you imagine yeah, if they got yeah, actually carpet, carpet would have been worse? Yeah. yeah, just gotta rip it out and start anew. Well, time we got burned down the house. <laughs> yeah. So I bought one a while back, uh, and I I didn't like it. I ended up returning it, I, I, and I and I have you know tile floors, and I didn't think it did that great of a job. So you need the mop then. Yeah, yeah. Well, you need it, the yeah. robot mop. <laughs> yeah, I want Rosie you know from what? the Jetsons. I will not rest. I will not die until I get Rosie. Fact. There you go. Yeah. Build your own. That's she it. She's great, man. Great with the it kids, was. right? Yeah. Made some good food. Microwaved it, albeit incremental, but we'll yeah. take it. Yeah, what's crazy is, so I don't know if I told you guys, but I finally bought my pool vacuum, right? Oh, nice. And they're not, they're not cheap, but this is one of those you plug in versus you plug into an electrical outlet versus, you know, you connect it to the wall of the return for, for the pool suction. Um, and... I actually like this one, um, but the choice was an additional, was it $300 between Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connected versus standard, like, let it roam and do its thing. I I just couldn't, I couldn't see adding the extra $300 just for Wi-Fi access because, heck, all it needs to do is just work itself around the pool and collect dirt and debris. So. Nobody is surprised that you did not spend the extra three hundred dollars. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's surprised. <laughs> Nobody's surprised. Well, well, I'll tell you this: I have a barbecue grill that connects to the internet, a pellet grill. I love that. That makes thing. sense. Yeah. yeah. Smoking your meat's got to do it right. Yeah. Can't be effing around. Mm-hmm. All right. Look at look at Chris. Like we got to get on the the next thing. It's gonna be longer than forty <laughs> minutes. People won't listen, guys. I I read the stats. I know when people drop off when they stop listening to the show. We'll have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For our next topic, our cryptocurrency story of the week. The U.S. Treasury Department has officially sanctioned the popular cryptocurrency mixing service called, uh, called Tornado Cash after they allegedly helped North Korea launder millions of dollars in stolen cryptocurrency. The decision means that people in the U.S. are banned from using the service. 
This comes after the Treasury Department banned a similar service, Blender.io, back in May of this year. The sanctions under the Office of Foreign Assets Control, or OFAC, means that anyone interacting with these service or listed wallet addresses is subject to criminal prosecution. Tornado Cash is marketed as a service to protect user anonymity. Cryptocurrency is not as untraceable as people believe, so a mixing service can be useful to protect your identity. This is the modern equivalent of bank robbers taking their marked bills and dirty bills, doing a big drug buy, and then driving across town and selling it to get different bills. I always wondered how uh, money laundering worked. Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> At a very basic level, that's well, that's, that's more like washing it. So you may, that money laundering actually makes it appear that you earned it legitimately. Washing it, I think, is like switching out the dirty bills for different Surprisingly, bills. no Thai detergent required. Had no idea. I don't do crypto other than the, the crypto that you guys convinced me to buy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Thanks, hey, Brian. Doge is up 5.16%. I'm, I'm only down 80% from my initial investment. <laughs> Thank God you didn't put your life savings in there. It was a fun thing, right? It's, you know, whatever. You're not my real Down percent yeah. up 5%. Yeah, Pretty I think much. I would have been better off just taking that cash and just like going to the liquor store. <laughs> so <laughs> Putting it on black in Vegas. There you yeah. go. We should have done that. That's what we really should have done. That's it's true. Always That's we're all there. Yeah. I still haven't gambled in 20 years. I can't believe that. Oh, you gamble so, every day. You gamble every day with your life, Deech. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> all I know is there's 87,000 new IRS agents, so just kind of steer clear of this uh, tornado cast service. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be messing with that. So never letting a good crisis go to waste, a troll account out there has been sending Ethereum dust or you know pennies worth of uh, Ether to the public Ethereum wallets of celebrities such as Jimmy Fallon, Brian Armstrong, Steve Aoki, and Logan Paul, hoping that their Ethereum wallets get blacklisted. <laughs> I can't kind of say like... that I like any of those people, so I'm I'm, I'm on board. But you, once again, you did put Brain Armstrong instead of Brian, but. Brain, Not yeah. Brain. But what did Steve Aoki Grammarly. do to you? It's just a yeah. It's just, I'm like, yeah, oh, there's, there's nothing wrong with Steve Aoki. He's a good DJ. Yeah. Don't even know who that is. Does he make Poke Bowls? A... No. So he's Devin Aoki's brother, the famous actress. Don't even know who that is. Okay, go and on. Their father started Benny Hanna. Been there. That's a pretty good place. <laughs> <laughs> good fried rice. That's what it. can I say? And the onion yeah. and the onion volcano. Choo choo. <laughs> you'll probably recognize if if you see a picture of Devin Aoki, you'll probably recognize her. She was in Too Fast, Too Furious, and Sin City. Still don't get it. <laughs> you no. can see his eyes. <laughs> I'm like, mm. You know what's crazy is my my youngest daughter. When it comes to any movie, like she just she knows like the actual like movie star names. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like even like when I exposed her to like the fast and the furious, right? Like she just knew everyone. Like that's Paul Walker. I'm like, who the hell's Paul Walker? And she's like, dad, he died in a fiery car accident. I was like, honey, it was a movie. She's like, no, in real life, he actually died <laughs> driving a fast car. I'm like, I don't believe you. So then I have to go Google it and stuff like that. You fact checked your daughter. I did. I lost that one. That's for sure. But yeah. She's, yeah. she's like all the time. She'll, Start rattling. We were watching like Divergent or something, and she's like, "Oh, this is so and so." I'm like, "How do you know that name? Because there's so many yeah. syllables. I don't get it." Yeah, well, it's their talent. She has talent for that. Way to hopefully she can make money off of this talent. Otherwise, it's, it's time wasted, in my opinion. <laughs> it's good naming. It's true. It's good, learning names and spinning maybe she them out should be in sales. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she needs to be in sales. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. All right, for our third topic, in a face meets palm moment, the UK's Ministry of Defense has issued an internal memo to its employees directing them to remove any reference to their clearance level from social media, including LinkedIn. Advertising you have top secret clearance with access to sensitive information paints a gigantic target on your back for threat actors. Don't make their job easier by marking yourself as a target. And if you guys remember, we had that sales leader here that used to brag that, that he was in the CIA. And what do you know? People in the CIA typically do not brag about being in the CIA. I'm just going to go. I, I'm sorry. 
I'll be right back. I'm going to go update my uh, my LinkedIn profile with all my top secret clearance for the UK's Ministry of Defense. We'll scam that the is, scammers, Chris. That is poor go. OPSEC. Not only that, maybe they should send out another email that says, and by the way, don't register your, your government email to Ashley Madison. <laughs> that would be a good one, yeah. <laughs> common sense, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah, not so common. There were a lot of .gov email addresses in that breach. That's right. I guess if you're trying to hide it from people, you just you're your boss apparently. And yeah. then, and then you, you, the boss being your wife. And, and then you use the same uh, password to, <laughs> from your corporate email to your to Ashley Madison, and now that's all been you know hacked. That's pretty cool. Yep, password reuse gets you in a lot of trouble. I may have been on a uh, <clears throat> company all hands call today and, and divulged my, my date of birth to everybody. Because <laughs> so the, could the be new like, VP. Poor OPSEC. Solution, poor OPSEC. Yeah. Whatever. It's out there. No, but the, the VP was talking about like, hey, he's like, I share the same birthday as so-and-so. And I was like, I am not going to be one up by this dude on his first day. So I had to let him know, like, I share a birthday with J-Lo and Carl Malone. So in your face. So now yeah. everyone knows. July 24th. Send the presents, baby. You have to guess the year, though. I'm not giving you that. <laughs> Carl Malone. That's that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. The mailman. Carl Malone, the mailman. Yeah, the mailman. He's got like 18 kids, something like that. He's no, got that's got to be Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp. Like No, no, it's Carl Malone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Brian's got to fact check you. I got to fact to, check you. He's got a lot <laughs> of kids. With the same wife? Yeah. Uh, no, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> 18 kids, you have to be perpetually pregnant. It says seven. It says seven. Okay. Still a lot more than two. So. Big difference. Yeah. Still, yeah. So, I mean, Google's I mean, broken even the, today, guys. Even the memo it. says, like, you don't have to advertise your clearance because people are not going to recruit you unless they actually know that you, you have it or you can achieve it. And it's just typically something you don't brag about. They'll hey. find you. You don't have to go find them. Have you guys ever thought about getting... Like high level clearance like that, I may or may not have had one at, at some point in time in my life. You have to have a legitimate, like you have to have a company sponsor you, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's actually really expensive. I think it's like twenty thousand or something just to get a, a TS clearance nowadays. But, but you also have to be in a position of working in that clearance, right? You can't just exactly, have it to yeah. Because if you yeah. cease doing the job, then it expires and then it it won't renew. Yep. See, I feel Absolutely. like. <clears throat> You know, in our line of business, I think uh, that level of clearance would be great. I mean, obviously, if you're dealing with like Fed space, DOD, but I don't see them as being like, you know, quick adopters of the cloud at this point in time. I could be wrong. What do you guys cloud think? is the future. It is the future. Just when? Well, I mean, one pressure. of the biggest growing clouds is that Gov, uh, Gov cloud, right? Yeah, so. AWS Gov cloud. Yeah, there's that giant Jedi contract from a couple of years ago that got canceled eventually. They, I don't even know what happened with that. So Microsoft won the deal, Amazon sued, and then they just ended up canceling it. But it was supposed to like modernize the DoD infrastructure by mm -hmm. moving it to the cloud. I'm okay with the DoD not moving to the cloud. Just so we're all on the same page at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as they could secure it. All right. For our last topic, and it'll be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to be talking about mandatory vacation time. I heard a report recently that more companies are switching to the mandatory vacation model. Right now, the majority of companies are using the optional vacation model where you take the time that you want. The unlimited vacation policy was popular for a bit and... On a side note, it actually benefits the company to offer you unlimited vacation because they don't have to hold the cash in reserves if they offer unlimited vacation. But then you have the problem of getting manager approval and feeling guilty about it. Mandatory vacation removes that guilt and your boss forces you to take time off. This is actually pretty common in the financial industry because if you're running some kind of embezzlement scam, when someone takes over your job for a week or two, they're likely to uncover it. I think the term is called forced rotation. So voluntary, unlimited, or forced vacation, which do you guys prefer? Yeah, I'm on vacation right now and I'm on this on I'm on the Pepcac, so <laughs> Are you on the voluntary vacation right now? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean I so I've been on I think I'd like to say I I have been on all three now. So when I worked at, 
you know, the oil and gas company, it was forced vacation. You had to have a, a at least a one week. Was it forty hours? You had to have forty hours away from the office at 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 any one of the fifty two weeks, um, mandatory, and simply because of exactly like you had said, Chris. Right. So concerns about doing something funny. Um, the voluntary vacation as well, and then the unlimited, like which is where I'm at right now, where take as much as you want, um, simply because you know if you need it, you need it. But uh, do I have a preference? I'll be honest with you, I really rarely take vacation, and when I do take vacation, I'm still working. So just because I don't want to end up with a thousand emails in my inbox. So yeah, that's this a is challenge. why this is why you should not like unlimited vacation because if you don't take vacation time. And you choose to leave. Guess what? All that vacation time that you would have had booked up, they don't have to pay you out, right? So that's why I'm against yep. the the unlimited uh, vacation. I'm I'm not for the uh, forced vacation because I feel like I know how to take vacation very easily. I would like a forced sabbatical, like you know, every couple of years. That'd be pretty dope. So yeah, I'm voluntary, and I and I learned this a long time ago. I structure all my pay time off with all like federal holidays. That way, I can just extend everything by a day or two. It feels great and doesn't take a whole lot out of my day. I do like the idea of a sabbatical, something like, you know, be gone for three months, something you've earned. You've you've been with the company five years, you get three months. You've been with the company 10 years, you get six months. Um, because that would be actually really cool, knowing that you can come back and yeah. still have your job. Do we do that yeah. at our, nice. is there a 10-year sabbatical thing here? Heck, we've only been around for 15, right? So how <laughs> <laughs> And at uh, your ten year mark, you you automatically get to go to the club trip. Oh, that's cool. Really? We'll see if that's yeah. still real in in five years. Well, when we hit it, yeah, because I remember when when we first joined, the five year mark was a, a big deal, and there was a ceremony for everyone. But I guess you know when when you and I hit the five year mark, like there's so many people that hit the mark with us, they they change what they they do for you. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how many people are still around. <laughs> It'll keep rolling, Chris. <laughs> yeah. But do you have to be in sales to get that uh, free trip to club? Or is it anyone in the company that hits 10 gets automatic trip to club? It's a good question. I'm not sure about that because the people that I interacted with, they were all in sales and that hit their 10-year mark. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Chris? Are you voluntary, unlimited, or forced? I think maybe a couple of years ago, I probably would have preferred the forced because, like you guys, I'm a workaholic and I work way too much and i think if i forced to take it i'd that'd probably be better but i think within the last couple of years i've learned how to use the voluntary vacation uh better and taking the time off scheduling that and being able to take that time off i i, I think it's voluntary i'm somewhere between voluntary and forced because now you know brian you and i are, are pretty good about taking the voluntary but i think you know even new people coming in uh, might not be as good. So for them, they might benefit better from the forced vacation model. Well, we don't care about everyone, just ourselves. So <laughs> I have, like, do I'm you ever feel guilty about else. taking time off? What's yeah, that? I, I, I think so. Like I, I had to take time off for when they, the kids are born. I, I actually didn't feel bad about that uh, just because I wanted to be home with the, the kids as, as they were born and help my wife out. Um, Probably more so during busy season if I have to take something off and I just don't want to put that on someone else. But, you know, one of our leaders here said, well, what's worse? You know, you taking a week off or you burning out and quitting the company? So I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I get your point. Actually, yeah. I have a, a huge shout out to one of my, my former managers back in the day when you talk about taking time off uh, when the kids were born. So when my my youngest was born, I was working at U.S. Airways. And, uh, you know, it was, it was tough back then. Like it was like to, to take two weeks off, like we had to save all the PTO up. Right. And even then, like it was still kind of like living a little bit paycheck to paycheck. So we decided I'm taking the entire month off and we, you know, scrimped and saved and we're ready to go. Uh, long story short, second weekend, I get the, the, the or I'm sorry, you know, weeks three and four, I end up getting paid. So I, I, you know, I felt guilty as hell, right? I'm getting this this check, and I like I should not have gotten it because I only had two weeks off. So I went and talked to my manager. His name was Tom Enderley. He's amazing. Hopefully, I get to see him again soon. Um, I went to him. I said, "Hey, man, like you know, this, this is eating me up on the inside. But you guys accidentally paid me uh, when you should not have. You know, the the handbook says two weeks, two weeks only. He says, "Well, 
it also says in the handbook it's it's up to the discretion of the, the of the manager so he went ahead and just took care of me for that I'll, and i'll never forget him for that because that was like freaking just amazing you know to be able to take care of your employees like that that's that's what i'm talking about that was a good leader right there so tom enderley if you're listening i still love you man you're great good story chris make me feel good now brian you mix us up you know we look a lot of like different <laughs> barely <laughs> glenn's still confused he's like what what <laughs> You said good story, Chris, even though it was Brian oh. was telling that story. Uh, yeah, I'm not Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> good story, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Keep Brain. it up. <laughs> yeah, it's good things like that. Like managers looking out for you, doing more than is required and looking out for the people. That really builds loyalty because even like you said, it's been ages since you've worked with him, but you still remember him and you still remember what he did for you. So even just little things like that, I think that that can make a huge difference. Yeah, compassion goes a long freaking way i'll tell you what yes it does yes it does maybe one day i'll actually have compassion for other people <laughs> yeah, you do you just gotta be Pay close to you yeah i think yeah, i'm you coming do. around i'm growing yeah, I, up eventually i think you do deech you don't uh you don't let off you do you're you're like a really nice you know soft teddy bear at the uh, at the core of yourself there whatever <laughs> gentle don't giant be, yeah. don't be telling my secrets boys <laughs> i have to release the hounds all right. Well, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, Glenn is up. So, you know, just in the uh, the theme of uh, take your kid to college uh, week, I thought I'd come up with this one. So uh, college kid says, hey, dad, I've got some great news for you. And father says, what, son? College student says, hey, remember that uh, you promised me $500 if I made the dean's list? And the father says, I certainly do. And the college says, well, good. You get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank goodness my kids are smart. I'm broke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be I, making promises you, know, you can't keep. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I shouldn't really tell this story, but Lord knows my, my stepdad's not listening to this. So when uh, I was graduating high school, like it wasn't a big deal. He said, but you graduate college. I'll get you a Rolex. So did the thing, went to college, no Rolex. My little brother graduates college. He gets a Rolex. He got us confused. <laughs> 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 so I see my, my little brother. Anytime he comes over to visit, he always wears the damn Rolex. Just to, just to throw it in my face. Did you tell him, hey, that's yours? Did you tell him that? That's mine. No, no. <laughs> yes, of course I did. I was bitter, man. What the hell? Yeah. That keeps you going. That's why you are who you are now. Yeah. Submariner, I think, is what it was. Yeah. Oh, that's worth some yeah. money now. Jokes on his face. Now. I have an Apple Watch. It can tell me my heart <laughs> can, rate. Can your Rolex keep track of your workouts? Yeah. Uh, would you guys ever have? Get, would you guys rather get a Rolex than an iWatch? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I like my iWatch. Yeah, it's tough. I, I, I'm always wearing my Apple Watch now. I rarely wear any of my luxury watches. Usually, only want to go out with customers. Luxury yeah. watch. Yeah. That means we're paying you too much, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say what brand and paint a giant target on my back, but yes, I have some nice watches that. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell everyone what he's got. Watch. So listen up here, team. I have seen Chris with two luxury watches on one on the left hand, one on the right. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to throw him into the bus, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's got like a hundred. He's got like a hundred millimeter watch that's got. <laughs> I mean, I like know. Ric Flair. This is a picture Ric of Ric Flair. Flair wearing his Rolex and his Apple Watch on the same wrist. I'm like, okay, if, well, if you're Ric Flair, you can get away with that. But I, I the nature boy, not. man, nature hey, uh, boy, he had a heart the attack boy. in the middle of the ring. Do you remember that? I do. Dude, wait. wait here's a bigger thing that's that should be questioned right now. How the hell did Hux, who's been on this podcast, go 2,000 consecutive days of hitting all three of his rings? I have never had an, an Apple Watch that's lasted long enough. That would to keep my streak alive like that. So he said he went two thousand days in a row, hitting the stand, move, and exercise. Yeah, is he still going? Yeah. What's his yeah, goal? I, like two two steps. <laughs> you probably like you could adjust it. Like if you know you're gonna not gonna hit your goal that day, just lower your your goal. There's ways uh, to game the system. Yeah. And knowing how much of an Apple fanboy he is, like he probably b upgrades every like every year, every other year. Hmm. Oh, so he. All right, that makes. I usually wait until my my stuff breaks, and then I'm like, "Damn it! There goes my streak. I'm never gonna get the 
the 365 in a row. Yeah, yeah. So just preemptively buy a new one. Before what? Before your watch dies. Because if your watch dies, then you can't keep you can't keep closing your rings. Oh, or I always see. have one as backup. You got to buy two watches? You're crazy. It's exactly. cost, cost more than enough it is right now. So Not as much as Rolex. <laughs> True that. All right, to wrap things up, Counter-Strike skins are not safe anywhere. MFA notification bombing is a real threat, as Cisco has learned. Amazon acquired Roomba maker iRobot, and that should scare everybody. Bitcoin mixers are getting sanctioned by the U.S. for helping North Korea. Don't advertise your national security clearance on TikTok. And take those vacation days. Do not leave them on the table. That's all we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You can find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Pedcac Podcast. Thank you to all our listeners and subscribers who rated us five stars in the iTunes store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pedcac Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For my co-host Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week. And as always, have a nice day. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. See you in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs>